welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Elaine. Hello. Hi. So, um, what business do you have going on around us right now? Um, well, I run a little uh, Etsy shop called Gecko Homes and Gardens, and primarily it's a focus on invertebrate and reptile theme themed items. You have quite the collection. I yeah. sure do. And, and all the enclosures are amazing, even for the invertebrates. Yes, thank you. So, with your business and your invertebrates, what do you do with them? Um, basically, I breed them and I keep them as pets, and then I also like to sell them as well at the up at the reptile shows. And would that be the Show Me Snakes? That is I correct. Assume? Yes, the Show Me Snake Show. I'm making all sorts of connections for people from the Show Me Snake Show. So, uh, shout out to Mickey, I guess, because he's yeah, it's a wonderful helping community. us with all these videos. Yes. So, what kind of invertebrates do you have over here? Um, mostly over here, I have um, my isopod collection, which is your basic roly polies. And I also do have some millipedes. And then up here, I have desert beetles. I have a couple different species uh, the deaf vein beetles and also some woolly beetles as well. I want to point out again like, how awesome this enclosure looks. It's just, I wish my kid just like, looked this good. And you said that it was kind of a lot of trial and error. Most out definitely. This stuff. So what are like, the species of isopods that you have up here? Because I'm seeing uh, this species here and it's a lot better than what I find in my yard. Most definitely, yeah. So I do actually have some common ones that you would find out in, you know, native here to Missouri. I do have a lot of more exotic ones. Uh, these guys up here are zebras. They're really cool. They're one of my favorite ones because they're black and white and they also get pretty big. Um, I also do have like orange, Dalmatians, calicos, and um, also uh, just some other like powdery blue ones and some other guys. So uh, you mentioned that you sell them at the expo. Mm -hmm. um, so how did it all get started? Did you start it initially to, like, for the purpose of selling them or like, with, for your own collection? It was mostly for my own collection. I've always done uh, bioactive habitats with my guys. And so it just kind of grew out of that. I really enjoyed keeping them. And I just found that I really love them as pets, too. And next thing you know, I got a whole bunch of them. And I just kind of wanted to share that with everyone. Because I just uh, got started with um, springtails. Most definitely. And like, I'm pretty sure that's kind of like the beginner, um, like invertebrate to start with, start with, with bioactive. And we got to have a little visitor here. That's um, a kitty. <laughs> so with the springtails and the isopods, like, what do they serve with a purpose in the enclosure? Yeah, definitely for bioactive, it's awesome. So they're going to do a little bit of different things. Springtails are going to be really good at taking care of like your fungus and molds and things like that, where isopods are going to be eating more of the organic. So they're going to help with like rotting leaf litter. Um, also, they really enjoy Pangea and Crested Gecko formula. So and um, they'll also help break down some of that stool matter as well. So what's the whole breeding process for these isopods and springtails? Because they're not as like, big as a frog or a lizard, so it's, is it more difficult or is it easier? It's very easy to do as long as you have a nice habitat for them where they're happy and healthy and have good food, um, they do it on their own. The cool thing about isopods is that the females have a little marsupial pouch and so they actually carry the eggs and let them develop um, in their little pouch and then they'll uh, hatch out as little tiny baby roly polies. So you don't have as a lot of mortality with like eggs or you know incubation problems because the moms take care of it. Just basically, just put them in there, let them fend for themselves, and yep, as long as they got food and water, they'll do good. And you mentioned that you don't necessarily have to feed them, but you guys always do. We do, yeah. We um, these guys, their primary diet is going to be hardwood leaf litter. Um, I also do supplement them with like carrots and potatoes and squash and and different things that way. Is that just for like extra like, nutritional value? Definitely. Like, especially since you're selling them, we want them to be healthy. Right, most definitely. Yeah, variety is going to be key to any animal, really. And would that be the same basic care with the springtails as well? Yeah, very similar care with them. Uh, the springtails do really good on, like, uh, you can actually just use, like, nutritional yeast for them. Uh, they'll also help break down organic matter, whether that's, like, fish flakes or even pieces of, like, potato or carrot and other different vegetables that way. And then you mentioned that they're very small, so it yes. takes them a while. Oh, yes, most definitely. So earlier you uh, showed me your millipedes. Mm -hmm. um, my dad can put in a little video of me holding a millipede earlier. So what do you have those for? Are those like just pets or do you those breed are, those as well? Um, a little bit of both, yes, I do. I really love my millipedes. I have um, probably about five or six different species of millipedes. The one that you held was a Florida ivory. And they're um, one of the bigger ones that you can get in the, in the fields around mm -hmm. here. And they uh, grow about four inches in length. And they're really docile, peaceful, awesome little pets to have. 
and mine happened to breed. So what has been like one of your favorite experiences while doing this? I really love getting to know the people and meeting new people that are in the community. I never knew how big of a community it was and how awesome it is. So we always get to talk to new new people and make new friends, and I love it. Mm, kind of like me. Exactly. Hopefully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's kind of like the same here. Like uh, when I first started this channel, like I knew some animal people, like or, like my friends, and I also had some interest in animals. But then, like as I've met more people and gone to new places, I can go to approach like most zoos that I've been to or most like expos and meet and talk to people right. that I know. Yeah. And our local pet store, uh, Tida Iguana, I know everyone there they all know me it's it's really like interesting to see how, how many people you can make connections with oh, yeah. in this field yeah. so how long have you been running this business um, this um, business I've been doing for about two years now um, but I've always been in this field in this community I've, I've always had a passion for reptiles and amphibians and creepy crawlies for probably I don't know the last 15 years or more so you kind of like have been with it for a right. while and you always wanted to be, maybe not exactly this, but kind of in the general. Yes, range. yeah, I've always really been interested in the hobby itself and then it just kind of blossomed into a little bit of a, a hobby that pays money. So what could you, like, start, like, what was the, the one animal that kind of hooked you with reptiles and, and or invertebrates? Um, with the invertebrates, I definitely, I started with the millipedes. They were by far just really cute and adorable, and they just took my heart, and then that just kind of branched open, me getting into, like, the beetles, and, you know, I eventually wanted to, like, do tarantulas and different things that way. Because uh, they do, they end up having, like, little personalities, and people just don't give them enough credit. Um, as far as reptiles, um, geckos. I started off with a leopard gecko. Um, I still have my first one, and he's about 17 years old now. So thank you so much for telling us about your business here and all the other animals that you have. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. And as always, I'll see you next week.